Hello everyone, welcome to Onion Skin, continuing on having a look at the interface of Harmony 12 and how that tends to work. Last time we dabbled around just shifting windows about how the tabs work, etc, etc, just to get comfortable with how the software is actually structured and how we can navigate it. We had a brief look at some of the windows, but not what they actually are or what they do. So that's what we're going to do today. Have a look at, at these windows and how they relate to one another. However, we're not going to go too deep into each one of them. I just want to point out which windows are available and how you can start to explore them at your own pace as well. Later on, we will start to get into each window individually and I'll really scour them deep and show you each and every single thing that they do and how you can use them to your advantage in your own projects. So to start off on this one, this is Harmony Essentials and the first couple of things I want to point out is, well the main one, the camera view. It's got this big grey space here and when you zoom out you can see it's got a black box surrounding uh, the camera, what the camera sees. And if I pick a colour and start scribbling all about, you see it can fall inside and outside the camera view and I can see everything that's going on. It's also kind of pixely around the edges. I'm not sure if you can see that, how it's like a hard edge. Uh, the reason for that is the program will deliberately compress the image a little bit to help it run faster and prevent things from just crashing for no reason at all. Now down at the bottom of the window, there's these two buttons here, these two flower-like shapes, a gray one and a blue one. Press the blue one and everything will turn black in the background. That means there's transparency, there is no image behind it and the green is now appearing very crisp. If we zoom in past 100% you can see there now we are bigger than what the video will actually see. So sorry down there 800% now it starts to become pixelated uh, so we can see what detail will be worth it. On this grey button here we'll flip back to the regular working mode within the camera view and up on this tab is the drawing view. This looks very similar, but it's a bit different. What is it and what does it mean? Well, you can see right away that there is no border surrounding where the camera is. Uh, it's a free flowing all the way out. So what's the point? One's white, one's gray, is that it? Well, not quite. Uh, down here is the timeline. The timeline is, well, it's, it's that. It, is your time measurement. As you pull the scrubber all the way out, you get deeper into the timeline, your movie plays out, and all of these layers will represent your drawings, effects, bone hierarchy, etc, etc. And the camera view, how it works with the timeline, will show all of your layers. So you can see here, if I put on this layer and, you know, do a... Is that meant to be a one? No, this is a one. Uh, on this layer, I'll put a two, and on this layer, I'll put a three. They're all visible. I can see everything that's happening. However, over on the drawing view, I can only see the three, because that's the only one I have selected. And if I flip between these layers, it will only show the layer that I'm currently working on. So that's what it's for. It allows you to quickly duck down into the piece that you're working on for quick edits and push everything that you don't need out of the way. So for example, if you're working on a really complicated body and hierarchy, you know, it's made of a torso, arms, fingers, and heads and faces and all that kind of stuff, and you need to make a quick change to a nose, you can go to the nose layer, duck into the drawing view, and you can just work with the nose. Yeah. Notice, however, that the drawing view does not have uh, those flowers. You can't get into the render view from drawing. So you got to flip back to the camera again, see everything in one place, then you can render things out as you wish. Now there's two other ways to look at your layers besides these two, and that is the top and the side view. So this is top and this is side. This triangle here is the camera. This is what we're seeing pointing outwards, and these flat lines here are our layers. So you can see as I flip down a different one will turn purple moving across. So that's the one that oop, that's the two and that's the three. Because remember that Harmony 12 is a 3D program sort of. It's two dimensional shapes that exist in three dimensional space. So as we get a bit deeper into learning this stuff you can push these layers forwards and backwards and these views allow us to get more fine-tuned control over where they're actually positioned in creating parallax and three-dimensional spaces and all of that lot. 
The next windows I want to show you are the properties panels. Notice there are two of them. There's a tool properties and a layer properties. So why are there two and what do they do? The tool properties will change itself depending on the tool that you are using. So notice as I click down each one of these buttons here, the tool properties panel will give us completely different options depending on what we are using. So for example, the brush tool gets us controls where we can make it bigger or smaller and activate a few different switches and presets. And the selection tool will let us select things and we can get to other parameters and controls there as well. Things like the paint bucket allow us to change the amount of influence of a gap that it would close. The text tool gets us, that's where you'd find to change the font and the size and aligning, etc. However, the layer properties is a bit different. It still changes what it shows depending on what you select, but rather than working with tools, it works on the layers. So each of these different drawing layers here, you can see it will give me different information on it. Now, when you're just drawing, a lot of the time you don't need this stuff because it's all about position and skew and size, all about keyframing and puppet rig style stuff. However, when it gets to things like effects, if you press the plus here, you can get to all the different layer types and all of these will have different things that will appear in the layer properties. And the very bottom one, which is called effects, things like blur, cutter, glow. So if I choose a glow one, for example, all the different glow controls will appear under layer properties. So that's how I can adjust them after pinning it to a particular layer. They can be done so by dragging them under any respective drawing like that and see how it kind of hooks underneath. The one has turned white. And this is what the render view is for in the camera. If I go to this, it will now show how the glow is working. See how it's gray? So, you know, just as an example, I'll pull it up to a blue like that and blur its glow out to, ooh, let's say about 10 like that. So you can see it started to bloom itself out, but under just the regular drawing view, it keeps things simple. It keeps the program running in a way that it's not gonna freak out. It's pretty good in render view. You know, I can still draw and stuff will appear, but there's only a couple of pieces here at the moment. Once there are seven characters and full backgrounds and everything is moving and there's whole lots of effects, it can get nuts. You know, it could come up to a minute to render just a handful of frames. And if that was happening for every pen stroke you put down, that would be awful. So it cuts all of that nonsense so that when you're in working view, it will keep fairly fresh and up to date for you. The last couple of panels I wanna show off in this video are color and library. So the color panels is, it looks pretty simple when you first open it up. White, red, green, blue. Okay, what do I need to explain about that? Well, they're not locked. Okay, so if I double click on this green one here, it brings up a color picker. And if I change it to say a pink like that, notice that everything that was already drawn with that green swatch has been made pink. So everything is completely live. So if I have a character that exists throughout, you know, a 2000 frame animation, and then I change the color of his hair, for example, it's gonna do it across the whole thing as long as I use the right swatch for it. So this isn't called green because it was green. I can name it hair. I can name this face and name this jacket. So you can construct full character palettes and then save them and log them and make variations of them. It's very, very cool. And it's also the reason why there isn't an actual color picker on the side, like in Photoshop and, and things like that, because every single one of your saved swatches is a color picker and it allows you to do way more and keep a very strong handle on your animation. But do be aware of it because things can get out of hand if, if you're not organized. And the last panel down here is the library. This thing is for saving and moving pieces from around this file and also other projects as well. So there's two main categories within it. The first there is symbols. This allows you to pack sections of artwork and sections of time uh, into a little library that you can pull out and recycle and use again and again. So for example, if I select all of that and go up to edit, create a symbol, just press okay there. You can see drawing one has appeared and wherever I want, I can pull out more drawing ones and they will be there like that. And the cool thing about symbols and when they're saved like this is if I right click it and go to edit symbol and then change one of these, 
uh, you'll get rid of a three and put in a five, for example, uh, and then go up to the top. You can see the hierarchy is up there in the camera view. Now, all of these have a five, yeah, except for the original, which um, was just plain vector art. So every time I pull one of these out now, uh, it's got five in it. So what that means is you can make a character and prepare certain sets of animation. And if you do change something later, similar to how the color palette worked, is it's non-destructive. You can update it later and repair things and adjust things. Yes. The other type of putting things into the library is called templates. So there's symbols and there's templates. The difference is templates aren't a master backup, if that makes sense. So you know how symbols, you change the source and it changes everything in it. Templates don't do that. When you pull one out, you can change what's there and it will not affect what's inside it. Okay. So on a new frame out here, I'm just going to draw a dumb splubby splubby square like that. Oh, I didn't point this out. Notice there's a padlock on it. You got to right click and say right to modify first. And the reason is that these things are global. It won't just exist in this file. So if you have something that exists somewhere way else and you accidentally delete it or edit it and you didn't want to, uh, then you're up the creek. So it, it's automatically locked just as like a read only mode. It just keeps things safe. And I'm going to copy this frame and paste it into the template library like that. Just drawing five is fine. Uh, and when I pull it back out again, you can see a new layer has been created, which also contains the square. But unlike the symbol, this one can be edited up on here. And it hasn't affected the original. It hasn't affected the one in there. So it's a different kind of backup. It's something that you can store things and you can get it out whenever you need, but it isn't like a master library. And remember, the other difference is templates are global. They exist across every file, whereas symbols are always only contained within this one file. So they do work quite differently and it can be very, very useful. But again, need to be organized to get used to it. Uh, so that is a general overview of the main windows that you find in Harmony Essentials. I'll probably do a, another one that shows off the windows of Advanced and Premium as well. And you can get a bit of an idea on which version of the software may be right for you. So have some fun and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for coming by. I hope you got something out of it. If you got stuck somewhere or something was a bit tricky, or if you have an idea for something else you'd like to see in a video, uh, please let me know. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other stuff in those links just there. Whoa. But thanks again and I'll see you again soon.